Hey, what's up? This is Scott with Level Up Tutorials, and today we're going to be taking on session variables in Meteor. So what this is going to allow you to do is save data to a session so that the given user using the application is going to be able to interact with your application without those changes being seen for everybody. Because right now what we've done is when you add a new checklist, that checklist item is going to show up on everybody's list. So we want to add some functionality to our website that allows you to interact with your website and not have that visible to every single person who's looking at that site at that moment. So let's get going right now. So let's say that we wanted to have some sort of a mechanism to only hide the uh, items that have already been completed, right? So let's say we only want to see the resolutions that we've yet to complete. but. You don't want something like this to affect every single user on the site, and you don't necessarily want this information to be persistent in the database. You just want the current viewer of this page to be able to select uh, whether they want to see those or not without affecting anybody else's experience. So what we can go ahead and do is what we can use as a session variable. And what we can do is save a value into the session variable. Uh, that will be able to modify and change, but that session variable is just a temporary variable that's only being affected for the person using the application. So let's go ahead and first we need to add uh, basically just a checkbox into our site. And we can go ahead and do that into our HTML here, right at our, our uh, input here, right in our header. And let's just do that directly above the monthly resolutions H1, or I mean directly below the monthly resolutions H1. So all we have to do for this is let's go ahead and do a label. And uh, we don't need a for, we just need a class. The class is just going to be class is equal to hide hyphen finished. Okay. And now inside of our label, we can put an input that's going to be a checkbox. And uh, like I said, type is going to be checkbox. And we're going to set checked to what's going to be a helper. And that helper is just going to be hide finished. So let's set checked, which is a property of this input type. And it can just be inside of brackets like we're used to with our helpers already. And this can just be hide finished. And I have that in camel case. Now inside of this input, let's just say hide finished resolutions. Okay, as you can see, we already have this checkbox. It's been updated here. And when we check it, um, nothing happens, right? Because we haven't really told it to do anything, but it, it looks all right. So let's come back to our application and let's write the event that's going to trigger uh, this variable to be changed. So what we can do is we can come to our helpers here and we have our template body helpers and we have our template body events. Since this event is going to be taking place in the body, like we've said, it's not going to be in one of our templates here. It's going to be in the body. Uh, we can do it in our template body events. So let's come here and let's add a new one. So we can do so just by adding a comma at the end of the last one and then having a string here. Now the event that we're looking for is going to be a change event. So we can say change and then space and with the selector that we want is hide hyphen finished. Okay, now we have a colon just like we've done before and then we're going to have a function with the event being passed in as the argument. And there we go. Now, here's where we get into something that we haven't done, okay? Um, what we need to do here is set a session variable. So the way you do that is you say session.set, okay? Easy enough. Now, inside of a quote, you assign this variable a name. So this name can be anything. However, it probably makes most sense to have it be the same as the helper we're going to use. So that's hide finished, just like that. And we have that in camel case. Now, the second value that this session.set function takes is going to be the value that we want to set 
to that given session variable. So it's going to be the event dot target dot checked. So when you check this checkbox, it's going to trigger this change uh, function here. It's going to create this session variable if it doesn't already exist. So this variable isn't going to exist. However, uh, the first time it finds it, it's going to say, okay, we want hide finished as a session variable to be set to whatever the current state is. So if we checked it, it's going to be checked. If we unchecked it, it's going to be unchecked, right? It's going to be false. So if we head back to our application, again, you'll notice that we can now check and uncheck this checkbox, but again, it doesn't do anything, right? We're not, we're not telling anything to happen yet. So how do we get the value of this, uh, this session variable to actually be worthwhile? So we can do that simply by modifying our helper that we have up here to grab our resolutions. And before we just said, give us all of the resolutions. Well, now we're going to modify that and we're going to say, give us the resolutions that are only checked. But we don't want to do this for everybody. So what we can do is write an if statement. We can just say if session dot get, uh, you'll notice that we're using session dot get to retrieve the session variable. And we're just going to say hide finished, just like that, just like we have before. Now this if session dot get, I'm sorry, I missed a um, open, there we go. So if this session uh, variable hide finished is equal to true, we're gonna wanna return, uh, so let's say return resolutions dot find. However, this time we're gonna actually ha have some sort of variables here. One's going to be checked and we're going to be only looking for the resolutions where checked so we have checked colon. And for the value of this, we're gonna use a MongoDB uh, way to check if something isn't, is not. So we can say dollar sign NE. And so it's dollar sign NE true. So as long as checked is not equal to true, uh, it's going to go ahead and find one of the re these resolutions. So that's gonna be ones that checked is just not set or checked is equal to false. Basically, if it doesn't say checked, it's going to go ahead and grab us this resolution. Cool, now I'm gonna finish this off with a semicolon. Now we can have an else bracket just like that and move this one up here. Okay, so this is kind of important. What we're basically saying is, if we have a session variable hide finished and it's equal to true, then go ahead and return only the resolutions that uh, have not been checked yet. Uh, otherwise, return all of the resolutions. So now we should be able to go ahead to our site here, and if we check this, you can see it's actually working. And it's working pretty darn awesome. However, one thing we haven't really uh, established yet is this uh, helper here that we used in our HTML, this hide finished. We're actually not using this hide finished at all. We wanna keep this in sync with what the actual session value is. So we wanna add this as a helper. So it's simply just defining a session variable. Uh, you can't use it as a helper um, until you define it as a helper. And that's sort of something that you figure out uh, as you work with Meteor is that you really can't use anything in your templates um, to display information without defining them as a helper. So we can come in here and add a comma to this template.body helpers. And let's add a new helper, which is going to be hide finished. And then we're gonna finish that off with the colon function and if you can guess what we're gonna do here, we're going to need to just retrieve the session variable. So we can say return and then session.get and then pass in hide finished and finish that off with a semicolon. So now this checkbox uh, is going to be completely in sync with the session variable. And as you can see, checking it and unchecking it goes ahead and uh, shows us either which resolutions we've yet to do or which resolutions we uh, just have completely total.
Cool, so that's session variables. You can store all sorts of things in session variables and retrieve them just by with your session.get. So you'll get more practice with session variables as we go. As always, this is Scott with Level Up Tutorials. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one. Bye.